The following is a CNN special report. Good evening, I'm Kira Phillips. You've seen the videos countless times. Images caught on tape. Amazing rescues, death-defying acts, killer weather, and outrageous criminals. But what are the real stories behind those pictures? What really happened before and after that camera started rolling? Find out in Videos Gone Viral. Close calls, unexpected brushes with death, and when they're caught on camera, these death-defying acts go viral. Take, for example, these two girls filming a karaoke selfie all while driving. Suddenly crash. Surprisingly, they ended up with only minor injuries, but not a surprise, the viral outrage over their stupidity. This family is taking a nice leisurely drive until they're faced with a car heading the wrong way and there's nothing they can do. <laughs> Miraculously, the family was okay. <laughs> now I want to warn you, this video is going to make you cringe. A woman and her five-year-old grandson are strolling down a street in Brazil when an out-of-control vehicle rams into a parked car rocketing it right towards them. There's no time to react, and the car runs right over them. Yet another lucky family. They only suffer minor injuries. In Australia, for reasons unknown, this woman jumps onto a moving train. She stumbles and disappears. But once the train rumbles by, the video reveals she's alive, on the tracks, defying death. In this next death-defying video, we meet Ron Valle from Walpole, Massachusetts. Pumping gas is his gig. Yeah, I love it, you know, because people are nice. Nah, I like it. Hey, buddy! My normal days is, you know, sometimes, it's a busy days, but sometimes slow. But no day was ever like this one. I was standing right here. I was gone the morning. I, I never see it. When I see the car, it was just hit me right here. The terrifying moment, all captured on this surveillance tape. And uh, I don't have any time to reaction, you know. And when next time I see, I was in the street try to wake up, you know, but I can't, I can't move. His boss, John Nasser, was doing paperwork when he heard the crash. I hear this banging noise, you know, big banging noise. I look straight, right, right into the, you know, camera, security cameras, and all I see is uh, Ron, a car going through. An elderly man loses control of his car, and Ron is thrown back 30 feet, landing inches from oncoming traffic and just feet from a burning gas pump. From the video, you can see how the, how the car went through him, truly really through, you know, and threw him away, you know. I was right here. My leg was on the street, and uh, the half of my body was on the, on the grass. And uh, I see the flames, a lot of flames over there. Uh, I try to stand up because I can't move. The gas pump is on fire. My first thought was, oh my God, it's going to blow up. That would be disastrous. But Nasser's brother-in-law runs to the rescue with three fire extinguishers, while the pump's safety valve kicks in, stopping the flow of gas. I rushed to Turan to check on him because he was thrown to the street. I don't want, I want to make sure no cars would go by and hit him again, and just to check on him. And the poor guy, all he was saying, my back, I can't move, I can't move. Ron was seriously injured. Months later, we showed him the security video. It's the first time he had seen the entire tape from that day. I'm in shock right now because I, I don't remember the I don't remember the whole thing. You know, I don't remember this. This happened, you know, and uh, just I remember the hit and uh, I don't remember the 
the rest of it, you know. You all right? You good? Good. Hey, how you feeling? I missed you. Thank God uh, Ron was okay. I mean, he's not 100%, but he'll, he'll get there. He's still young. Uh, it wasn't worse than this, and he could have died, um, or the station would have blew, blown up, or whatever. And ironically, it wasn't the first time this happened at one of John's gas stations. Just two days earlier, this near miss was also captured on security video. What's, uh, you know, <laughs> the odds uh, two gas stations that belong to me at, uh, within, within a couple of days. On a rainy night in Portland, Oregon, first responders are confronted with a huge challenge. A car stuck on a railroad track with a train barreling full speed ahead. It all started when Patrick Higgins hears a startling sound. Like the shriek of sheet metal. The sound by itself was enough to make anybody at least get up and look. A car accident just across the street from his apartment. You could tell the guardrail had been completely snapped away. That guardrail separates traffic from the railroad, and a train is coming. And the car was clear up on that slope. I mean, had the train come, it would have just swiped it away like a you know, batting of all. Within moments, rescue crews swarm the site. The driver can't get out. He was actually pinned in underneath the dash and he wasn't going to be coming out on his own. Captain Corey Wilson with Portland Fire Station 14 is first on the scene. Firefighter Lisa Knight is wearing a helmet cam, capturing the event. And he kept kind of saying that he just needed us to pull him out. I mean, right there, I was just kind of seeing if I could pull on that door a little bit before the truck company got there to cut it open. These firefighters had only a matter of minutes before the oncoming freight train would crush the car with the driver still inside. It's on the edge of an active railroad track, and a freight train is rumbling by on another track just feet from the accident. I remember the uh, police officers were keeping us posted on where the train was. I remember vividly one of them coming up and saying, hey, the train's about a mile out and it's, it's still at speed. And no one can reach the railroad company to stop the oncoming train. You know, in the back of your mind, you have that, <laughs> there's a train coming and it hasn't stopped and there's still not confirmation that it's stopping. So the crew takes quick action. They decide to lift the auto off the tracks. It weighs several thousand pounds. Is that out of gear? It was a really good, uh, good teamwork between the police and fire and the ambulance crew that was there. It was just a one, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. I think you can even hear it on the video. One, two, three. Yep, yep. But the first lift is not enough. And uh, we're still a little close to the tracks for comfort, so we decided to do it again. No, we don't train to lift a car up every day, but it's still it's something ingrained in your head where you're just kind of like, well, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, I know how to squat, I know how to pick up things, well, let's do this. So it's, yeah, it's just, I don't know, I guess it's the adrenaline. Um, you know, it took two times, but it was a fluid motion and it was great. Finally, the six firefighters managed to lift the car off the tracks. Sir, are you getting some relief from that? The driver is safely removed and transported to the hospital. When everything was all said and done, we could see the train, the oncoming train that had come to a stop. We could see its lights in the, in the distance about 20, 25 blocks away. So it was uh, when we were picking up and seeing that train, it was a reminder of just how, how close things were. Up next, first responders don't just save lives. We're uh, delivering a baby. you had to read a police report to find out exactly what went down at the scene. Now, there's dash cam and mini cameras attached to sunglasses, helmets, where everything is recorded. And because of that, 
You never know what's going to happen. One more test. Turn around, face me. Simple sobriety tests can become dance contests. Like that? What? <laughs> Unfortunately for this Ohio driver, he's performing for the wrong audience. <laughs> A jailbreak caught on tape becomes an embarrassment for the whole world to see. That's prisoner Derek Estelle slipping through a small counter slot with a sheriff's deputy in hot pursuit. This Houdini was on the run for almost two months before landing back in prison. I'd like to know what's going on. Even some folks famous for their on-camera work can find police footage unflattering. You know my name, sir? For those of you who don't. You're about to find out who I am. That's Oscar winner Reese Witherspoon. When she and her husband are pulled over in Atlanta, this cameo goes viral. I'm an American citizen. I told you to get in that car and stay in there, didn't I? This is beyond. I this is beyond. You fight with me. The actress later apologized for her rant, saying she panicked. I have done nothing against the law. When her husband was arrested for driving while intoxicated. I'm now being arrested and handcuffed? Yep. For cops patrolling the streets, it can be a jungle out there. As one rookie in Aransas Pass, Texas, finds out real fast. It all started with a traffic stop. Patrol officer Keith Moore had only been on the force for a few months. Everything seemed normal. I didn't see any passengers in there. I'm Officer Moore with the Aransas Pass Police Department. He was pulling over Richard Spohr for speeding. He doesn't seem nervous or he's trying to hide anything from me. When Officer Moore asked Spore to sign his ticket, well, that's when things get a little wild. Can you sign right here? Whoa. Meet April, the capuchin monkey leaping out from the back seat. When she jumped at you, what was your first reaction? I think I yelled or shouted, something like that, and I kind of scooted back a little bit. Just having something lunge toward you just kind of shocked me. And Moore's partner? Well, he didn't exactly have his buddy's back. His monkey attacked me. What? He's got a monkey in it and it attacked my hand. <laughs> he thought it was real funny. It came out of nowhere. He thought I got stung by a bee, I guess, but like I said, no. It was a monkey. At any moment, were you thinking, what the hell was a monkey doing in this guy's Yeah, truck? it was extremely shocking. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, huh? And neither was April's mm -hmm. owner. Usually, she's well behaved, but not when she's protecting Papa from the long arm of the law. She was getting nervous. So, she comes over and gets on my shoulder behind the doorpost. I know now she was getting ready to ambush somebody. And what was your reaction when April leapt at the officer? My reaction was, oh my God, a traffic officer. <laughs> We're dead. We're dead. We got to get out of this town now. But this traveling tandem only got a speeding ticket, while the traffic stop video turned April into a festival phenom and viral sensation. Aren't you adorable? So now, as April and Proud Papa travel to fairs Put your hand out, she gave you a five. and festivals all over Texas. That's lucky! Mm. April, give a kiss. There you go. <laughs> Everyone wants a little affection from the smooching celeb. Because who wouldn't want to be kissed by a monkey? That didn't work. <laughs> oh, save it. We'll do it again. <laughs> In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, officers Javier Benitez and Adam Bradley were out on night patrol when they thought they came across a drunk driver. Looked up and saw a guy stopping at red lights, honking his horn, and then proceeding through them. We turned around behind the vehicle not knowing what it was, possibly a drunk driver. After several blocks, the driver, Felipe Alva, pulls over. The cops get out to investigate. Our alert goes hot, more heightened because they're kind of hearing like a moaning or something, someone in pain. As I continue my approach, I see fully that the female passenger is in labor. We're uh, delivering a baby. I try to tell them, you know, I try to scream out, you know, she's having a baby. The two cops quickly realize Brenda Alva needs help. She's not going to make it to the hospital. Benitez and Bradley become midwives with a badge. Immediately I open the door and I just explain, I'm going to help you 
basically catch the baby at this point. The mom the whole time was very calm and they had a five-year-old in the back seat jumping around saying, oh, my little sister's coming. Within seconds, Bella is born right in front of the Milwaukee Public Market. The officers unwrap the umbilical cord from around her shoulder, but Bella still isn't breathing. We started uh, to clear the airways for the, uh, the mouth, kind of did a slight pinch to kind of get the nose. I'm kind of patting the bottom and then Adam's uh, flicking her feet to try to get that response. It felt like forever. All of a sudden she just cries and you hear there was probably like 10, 20 police officers, you know, and all of them are cheering. They're like, oh, once they hear her cry. cute. Benitez is the dad of two small girls. Now he feels like he has three. I'm just excited. I got, I'm yeah. like, I'm the father or something. I got smiles, you know, ear to ear, just telling, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe we did that. It was a great feeling. Months later, it was time for the reunion. You look great. You, you look you. good. Hi, cutie. How you doing? You remember us? If you get stopped by a police officer, you forget that face, you know, but these two guys, like, we're gonna remember them forever. It was more than just like a police help, you know, just a service or something. They, it seemed like they actually cared. This was by far the most different, rewarding thing I've ever done or been a part of. Yeah, like he, he said, it's one of the top things that you can ever do on the job. This job has its perks and rewards, but I think that was one of the best ones, you know, better than a free cup of coffee. Up next. What I saw after that is just indescribable <laughs> with the car bailing up behind me. See what happens when a training exercise for a guide dog turns into a real life rescue. There's Look at that dog, oh, man. Oh, this is gonna be tricky here. Rescues of every kind make great viral videos. Oh, he's gotta be careful there. Oh, man. Just take a look at this man, stuck on top of a construction crane in Canada as fire rages below. Here we go. He's soon plucked from the skies by a military helicopter, burned but alive. Orange County Sheriff's deputies rush into an inferno of another kind. Get out of the car right now! A blazing car, saving the driver just before it explodes. Time is running out for this dog after it wanders out too far on this frozen pond. A determined firefighter makes his way through the icy waters, smashing the ice with his fists and pulling the dog to shore. And get a load of this one. Two people nearly run over by a car, but saved by a dog named O'Neill. O'Neill was training to be a guide dog a job he had been groomed to do since he was a puppy. Just look at these young dogs at Guide Dogs for the Blind in Northern California. Don't chew on the camera. Ah. It's very scary. The pups are sent to people who raise them for about 18 months. Clarice Williams had O'Neill. He is such a sweetheart, very mellow dog. He's just a joy to be around. It was not easy giving him up when he graduated. That's a hard day, it really is, because you have been with this dog day in, day out. They go everywhere with you, and you just become so attached to them. They let you be alone in the little kennel, and you say your goodbyes, and you cry. But it was time for Clarice to let go, and trainer Todd Jurek to take over. It was uh, the final guide we're testing. Good boy! And we were uh, preparing O'Neill to uh, finish up and we were gonna match him with a client if all went well. Todd had no idea the big Labrador Retriever would soon be a lifesaver. When I first heard it was this big bang and it was almost like a firecracker. What was supposed to be O'Neill's final exam became a real life death-defying act. Just a smash, just pop of a window smashing out of this building, and that's what got O'Neill's attention. Here's what happened. One instructor is blindfolded, O'Neill is leading the way, and Todd is evaluating. And what I saw after that 
is just indescribable <laughs> with the car barreling up behind me. Captured by three security cameras, a car hurtling in reverse toward the trio. The driver reportedly hit the wrong pedal. So when they do see traffic or hear traffic, they are uh, trained to respond to that. Neil heard the traffic sound and turned around immediately to alert us. Yeah, which was pretty cool. And he didn't put on the brakes or freeze or anything. He did what he was supposed to do. He did a really nice job. And word traveled fast at Guide Dogs Training Center. O'Neill was a hero. I couldn't believe it, you know. And then I saw the video, and that was the first time I saw him since I dropped him off. And it just kind of brought tears, and I just was amazed that that's a meal? All that hard work was worth it. The near miss left an impact on Todd as well. All our testing goes up that block, so I had to modify testing for about a month just to just to get over it. And, and I know now every time I look across the street, there's still the tire marks and the car marks on the building. So that's very hard for me to continue to see and it, it always brings it back. Wow. Is this a me? Hi, buddy. We reunited the team of trainer and dog. Hi, where you been, huh? It was a happy ending to a bad situation. Today, O'Neill is a therapy dog in Fresno, California, still helping people, but in a different way. What a big dog. Yeah, he is. Oh, goodness. And how lucky I am to, to see him. I'm very proud of him doing a, a job that's keeping people calm, and, and, uh, and he's part of that calmness. So the, and that shows you how well he, he handled that catastrophe. He's such a sweet boy. Tampa police pilot Dave Dennison and tactical flight officer Brian Gentry have been flying together for four years. We know each other's strengths and weaknesses kind of deal. It's like any <laughs> married couple, you have your good days and bad days. It's around 11 p.m., 230 miles to the north. Courier pilot Mark Love takes off from Valdosta Regional Airport in Georgia. Heading for Tampa, Florida. Soon their paths would cross. It was right about here when Gentry and Dennison heard that first distress call just before midnight. Tower Star Trek 800, I'm going to need runway uh, 10. I've lost the oil pressure. The Cessna was failing. Do you want the equipment standby? Uh, no, sir, let me talk to you on the ground. Uh, it's running a little rough here. I sh should be able to make it, though. As we heard the aircraft in distress, you know, both of us kind of looked at each other. That's when we progressively started getting worse. Then, just across the horizon, Gentry spots a flickering speck on his infrared camera and zeroes in. There's just a small white light. As it gets closer, you can start to discern more that it's an aircraft, and uh, it is becoming larger. There's a portion of the tape that you actually hear us comment, and I believe I said it, is that, you know, he's going to make it. He, he's got it. He's got it from there. But they were wrong. To all our vehicles, I need you to roll immediately. The guys soon realize it's a single-engine Cessna, and it's heading straight towards traffic on Tampa's busy Memorial Highway. You can see Love's plane narrowly miss a truck and then he crashes only 40 yards from the runway. PD4, thanks. We're, we lost his uh, light very short to the runway. The distress calls go silent. And the next thing Dennison and Gentry knew, their routine air patrol was about to become a dramatic rescue. I knew I was going to be able to put that aircraft on the ground a lot faster than they were going to be able to get there and get him out. While Dennison shuts down the chopper. Go, go, go. Gentry leaps out and runs to the plane. The engine is on fire, and the pilot is in bad shape. It was dark. He had hit the dashboard or the cockpit pretty hard with his face. If I knew the individual, I wouldn't have recognized him. Making the rescue even more difficult, the pilot is stuck and unconscious. Fuel is leaking, and at any moment, 
this Cessna could blow. One way or another, that guy was coming out of that airplane before the airplane, you know, caught on fire. But the door is jammed. So Gentry, with all his strength, rips it open and pulls Mark Love out of the burning aircraft. Wow. Two months after the accident, Gentry gives us the first look at the mangled plane. Did you actually get inside the aircraft and pull him from the seat? Tell me how you... Oh, no, yeah, I was com completely in the aircraft, okay. basically put him in like a, a bear hug, okay. and then uh, began pulling on him to try to free him from the cockpit. What would have happened if you wouldn't have been able to get him out of there? Uh, it wouldn't for, have been good. It probably would not have been good. Pilot Mark Love is still recovering. He talked to Dennison by phone. He thanked me. He, uh, you know, he told me that uh, many of the doctors that he spoke with have said we did play a role in the outcome of his life. You know, if Brian would not have removed him when he did, that he might not be with us. Woo! Ready to roll, everybody. Up next, a homeowner records a massive tornado from his backyard. But see what happens when he becomes the target. Oh! And. I'll take you off-roading oh my God. in the mudslides of Colorado. They have no control at all. Oh, my God. In Illinois, a powerful tornado churning 170 miles per hour rips across the city. Go. Leave that door so I can get in and one man captures it all on camera. Woo! Look at all the roof! Oh, house! This house is destroyed, but the family makes it out alive. Friends, we're okay! Dramatic and unpredictable forces of nature caught on tape. You see that smoke? Yeah, that's propane blowing off the tanks. Whoa! This innocent-looking hailstorm started in Oklahoma City, but within seconds, it turned the swimming pool into a violent jacuzzi. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I've never seen anything like this. In Taiwan, a torrential downpour floods the roads, but it's nothing compared to what's about to happen. The rain causes a major landslide. Watch as flying debris pushes the car across the road. Seconds later, a massive boulder rumbles down the hill and teeters inches from the car. Take another look. Watch as the boulder barrels straight for the car, then stops. Miraculously, no one was injured, but another few inches and the car would have been an oversized hubcap. Here in Colorado Springs, one reporter never thought he would be a part of the story, but that's just what happened to video journalist John Schroyer when thunderstorms drenched his city. I told my editor, I was like, I'm gonna head up Highway 24, see if, uh, see if I can get any, any decent footage or anything like that. And he was like, all right, okay. So, so you knew there go. probably could be a story? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I knew there could probably, I could probably pretty easily get some, some pretty good flood footage. Schroyer heads northwest of Waldo Canyon, that's when he starts shooting a video that becomes a viral hit. Wow. Oh my God. Bam, just hit me. Oh my God. And Schroyer ends up on the ride of his life. His car just swept away. Oh my God. All right, so take me from the point where the water picked up your car, turned you 180 degrees, and then what? I was just floating like I was on a roller coaster from God. Wow. I had no idea what was happening at first. I, it, it was surreal. I, I mean, the water just completely picked me up. I, it was like a rag doll, essentially. I mean, my, my car, I don't know. I have no idea how much a Subaru weighs, but it just picked me up like, like I was a, an empty milk jug and turned me around and just carried me down the highway. So when it swept you up, do you remember how you felt, like what you were thinking at that moment? I'm being picked up by a giant wave of mud and carried back down the highway. Oh my God, what is happening? And you were and still rolling. Yeah. One, was, hand, on still rolling. Yeah, one, one hand, hand on the steering wheel, one hand on the camera. One hand on the steering wheel, you know, swearing and trying to, <laughs> stupidly trying to steer, you know, and just, oh my God. And, 
you know, um, and bouncing off of all kinds of stuff. Oh my God, shit. Did you even realize you were hitting light poles? I didn't, I, I saw it coming and then as soon as I hit it, there was this huge splash of mud and I didn't realize I had actually knocked it over um, until much later. Look what's going on. This is crazy. But Schroyer wasn't the only one recording his on. roller coaster ride. You see? Check that car. <gasps> oh, oh my God. Turns out staying in his car probably saved his life. So when you finally came to a stop right here, were you like, oh, thank God it's over? Or were you, what was going through your mind? What was going through my mind was crap, I just totaled my car. Oh my God, my car is totaled. I can't believe this. That and okay, I have to start getting video now back to, uh, back to my editor so I can start posting some of this stuff. And he did describing every detail of his harrowing ordeal. I just got turned around by a whole flash of mud. I can't even see out, out my windows now. I don't know what the hell is happening. I tweeted out a photo of my car um, after I got out and jumped across uh, the water. And as soon as I did that, I started getting interview requests from local TV stations. Uh, they wanted to use footage that we had posted and all this other stuff. And it was pretty overwhelming, honestly. It was crazy. Schroyer is still shooting videos for the Gazette newspaper and website. One recent assignment had him covering efforts by the local county to stop, you guessed it, more flooding in the area. Up next, passengers take down a bus riding bandit and a small town mystery finally solved. This has been the craziest thing that ever happened in this small town. It was a big story. <laughs> it went national. <laughs> The perfect crime takes months, maybe even years to plan. But if it's not done right, you're busted. And if it's caught on tape, you go right to viral video infamy. Like these gun-toting gangsters chased off by a four-pound chihuahua. This robber on a Seattle bus wanted to make some quick cash, but instead, the passengers give him a beatdown making this villain a viral hit. Some criminals will do anything to escape the law. Oregon police remember a cold winter's day when this woman went to desperate lengths trying to flee. Don't do it! Don't do it! Troutdale's a pretty quiet town for the most part. Generally, we're gonna be dealing with thefts and domestic violence instances and drunk drivers until Troutdale police officer Jeremy Costello spots someone driving erratically. But what caught my attention was how she pulled out and I truly thought she was gonna hit this pedestrian, without a doubt, uh, to the point where I think I remember in the car kind of throwing my arms up going, oh crap. Next thing Costello knew, he was in a high-speed chase. She's trying to flee from me in a stolen motor vehicle. So I proceed to give chase, the lights and sirens on. Joining the hunt, Gresham City Police Officer Jim Leak. Here she runs off the road up onto the sidewalk. I believe she might have hit a rock or a retaining wall there and blew out a tire. But the suspect keeps going, now heading out of town at high speed and straight for a bridge. Well, honestly, I thought what she might do is park the vehicle in a position to where it blocked our vehicles and then she would get out and run on foot. But then the unexpected happens. As I'm falling behind, I see the door open. I think she's gonna flee on foot. Before I know it, she goes right for the guardrail and I knew in my mind she's gonna jump. Officer Costello makes one last plea. Don't do it! Take a look at that again. Don't do it! Okay, he just jumped in the river. Suspect Rebecca Humphreys jumps 30 feet into the freezing water beneath her. I was completely shocked by that. 
Officer Leak is just as amazed. I've been on three of these bridge jumpers and the other two have died when they've jumped off the bridge. Don't do it! I was very surprised to see her surface when she hit the water because of the drop. What starts as a pursuit is now a rescue. She hits the water and begins swimming east towards the main current and the deeper water. And I was yelling at her, don't do it, come back, come back. You've done enough foolish things today. And she agreed this was really stupid. And from the water, she yelled to me, and then she started coming towards the, the bank. Later, Officer Costello interviewed Humphreys at the hospital. She made the statement that she was scared. Uh, she didn't want to get caught with a stolen vehicle, and she was just trying to get away from us. A convicted felon, Humphreys' ludicrous leap just added seven more charges to her rap sheet. Don't do it! Thousands of miles away, in Clinton, South Carolina, a quaint southern city far from the fast lane. Here, hospitality and charm intersect at the town square. Then, the unthinkable happens. When I first heard, I uh, was like, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. In a small town, it got kind of, it was huge. A series of thefts has these residents on alert. This has been the craziest thing that ever happened in the small town. It was a big story. <laughs> it went national. <laughs> Items just disappearing from store shelves. And of all things, pig ears. Yeah, I've heard some crazy stuff around the area, but this, this, this ranks right up there with the crazy stuff. And the police baffled. Initially, I thought it was a prank. Officer Casey Templeton was fresh out of the academy when she got the call. We get over there, and the manager starts telling us about it. And then I then asked her, I was like, do you have this on surveillance? And she said, yes. Yeah. So I was like, you've got to show me. I've got to see this. And then lo and behold, we had a shoplifting dog. A shoplifting dog. Clinton resident Angela Mims followed the case closely. This thing was coming in and grabbing stuff off the shelf and go back and burying it. In Clinton, they take shoplifting very seriously. The perp was arrested, booked into the animal pound, and his mugshot filed into the system. Who is this canine klepto? A 10-year-old Siberian Husky who goes by the name Kato. His motive? Grab it and growl with intent to bury. His targeted treats? Hamburger buns, dog bones, and the highly coveted pig ear. Why'd you do it? Did you have an alibi? Kato, why do you shoplift? Was your mom your accomplice? Why does he shoplift, Holly? Um, I think he's bored. <laughs> I really think he's bored. <laughs> Fess up, you're not starving him. No, I'm not. No, this, he, he will eat five times a day if I'd let him. There's conspiracy theories out there that, you know, you guys are in on this together. Well, I wouldn't want dog treats. <laughs> Give me something good at least. <laughs> Explain how he does it. He just, he bolts out the door. If the kids are here, he'll push them out of the way to get out. He'll just take off and then he'll be gone for hours. I know he's gone to Ingalls. I know he's gone to Ballet. He's gone to Pizza Hut. When I start to chase him, he'll look back at me and I'm not lying. He will smile and it's like he's laughing to himself and he keeps going further. Casing out his next joint waiting for that door to open and pouncing on his next pig ear. When we return, find out what happens when a potty becomes too portable and... Keep your eye on the ball, sweetie pie. How I ended up going viral. Finally, there are some videos that just defy explanation, like this, a runaway porta potty breaking wind down the street. It's a runaway For those car enthusiasts out there, this may be a hard one to watch. Vintage Corvettes dropping from a showroom floor.
floor into a gaping sinkhole underneath the National Corvette Museum. A parent's worst nightmare, a child riding his bicycle when suddenly a neighbor's dog viciously attacks him. Then, out of nowhere, this feisty feline springs into action and saves the boy from serious injury. Take a look at it again. Just as the dog is pulling the child from the bicycle, the cat leaps into action and does his best Bruce Lee impression. And the heroic feat did not go unnoticed. A minor league baseball team asked her to throw out the first pitch days later. Let's face it, cameras are everywhere these days. And as you've seen, some of those videos then become huge viral hits, each one with an amazing story. And if you think it can't happen to you, just wait. Even seasoned photographers like me can get caught off guard. Keep your eye on the ball, sweetie pie. That was a great, great shot, KK. So better watch out. The next viral video people are talking about could be you. I'm Kira Phillips. Thanks for watching.